Hey folks, today is Friday, February 9th, 2024. As usual, my name is Jake Baldino, here to talk about all the video game news that has been going on this week. If I look a little a little weird, it's because I was up all night playing Helldivers 2, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But we got a lot of news to talk about, so let's just jump right in. The first thing is about Xbox. Have you heard the news about Xbox? Have you been living under a rock? The rumors and, and, and articles that sparked uh, a massive, massive conversation online. Earlier in the week, and this is to get caught people up, if, if you've already been paying attention, I apologize, but very early in the week, uh, rumors started to come out uh, from reputable sources like The Verge suggesting that Microsoft is heavily considering and, and pretty much moving towards going a lot more third party, meaning publishing their first party games that were exclusive on more platforms like PlayStation. Most notably, uh, the first things that were noted were things like Starfield going to PlayStation 5 and also uh, Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. Games that were originally intended to be uh, just Xbox exclusives, uh, essentially going out to the greater ecosystem. But then the rumors kept swirling with potential properties like Gears of War also making their way over to other platforms. And of course, uh, this is also backed up by the news from last week that Hi-Fi Rush is coming to other platforms. So it does seem like Microsoft and Xbox are pushing towards full, you know, getting their stuff out on other platforms, which obviously is a big deal. Remember when Gears of War was supposed to be on PlayStation originally? They're, they were making Gears of War for PS3, right? There's a, that build out. Yeah, there is. That's right. Well, now it's finally happening. That was good. That was a good, good gamer brain there. It leads to a lot of questions. Questions from the Xbox community. You know, like is Microsoft, is Xbox kind of stepping back from hardware and prioritizing just software? Uh, is the meaning of owning an Xbox now devalued to some people? What's the deal with Game Pass? Is Game Pass now going to really be everywhere? Microsoft and Xbox heads have said so many things about what they want to do. They've been so public and talking about their plans and like reacting to people asking them things that like you still don't totally know what they're going for here. But we do know that they are going to officially acknowledge this uh, next week. So we'll talk about it more. But uh, head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, did post online on Twitter or X or whatever. I'm just calling it Twitter. I think most people still are. <laughs> he said, and I quote, we're listening and we hear you. Uh, we've been planning a business update event for next week where we look forward to sharing more details with you about our vision for the future of Xbox. Stay tuned. Now, a lot of us like video game talky people online have had a lot of navel gazing and conversations and speculation about uh, what this means, but a lot of people are wondering if this means that Xbox's big gambles, uh, their big moves towards platform building and spending and acquisitions uh, that kind of really kicked off with Phil Spencer really spearheading a lot of it from like the Xbox, the later Xbox One days, uh, the Xbox One X, and then over to the Xbox Series X and all that. Uh, is that not paying off as fast as Microsoft was hoping? Who knows? I mean, the Activision Blizzard transition just finalized. I expect them to still be in the long haul for that. But are they making these changes because they're not happy where Xbox is going? I mean, Xbox has publicly and forthcomingly stated that they are third place in the console wars. So is their mindset here instead of just being third place we pivot our business model and change it up even more i don't know i've always said that xbox like even if you're not an xbox fan uh we talk about them a lot on the show here because they're doing different things uh you know they're, they're keeping things kind of interesting uh game pass is an unconventional idea or it started as one so who knows what they're going to do next i really don't know what they're going to say next week at this uh business event which doesn't sound very exciting. I don't expect like a big flashy showcase or anything like that. Will it be a stream? Will it just be a statement? Will it be like a, a detailed blog post? Uh, will we see more leadership change-ups right away? I don't know for sure, but we will keep you abreast of what's going on. Abreast, keep you abreast. Why do people say that? Abreast, keep you near, near the breast. All it seems like though is that I can smell it. Ch -ch changes. So we'll, we'll see what the deal is, but I definitely wanna know what you guys think in the comments. People are all over the place with this. You have PC fans, you have PlayStation fans, whoever fans that are just excited to maybe get their hands on more games that were, you know, kind of walled away in the Xbox ecosystem. Then you have some people who have been invested in the Xbox ecosystem, worrying about what the future may be for their console. So a lot of feelings out there, no concrete news yet, but I wanna know what your temperature is.
A lot of big business news this week in the gaming news world. Uh, Disney has announced that they have invested $1.5 billion in Epic Games. This is like an investment stake, whole nine yards, and uh, this is with the intention of uh, building out more Disney stuff with Epic, creating, in their words, uh, a digital world where players can play, shop, watch. Uh, A lot of it sounds like metaverse talk but metaverse as a word has already very quickly faded away from uh, the corporate zeitgeist, so we'll, we'll, we'll see what the deal is there. Also, I do apologize, there's construction going around everywhere in this building, uh, <laughs> if the sound is kind of whack, but... A lot of crafting. We're, there's a lot of crafting going on. <laughs> I'm sure a part of it, maybe not all of it, but like... A, I'm sure a part of it, but like, I don't know all of it, like how much it helped with this, but uh, their recent success with other things, uh, Marvel games doing very well, uh, the Star Wars games doing very well. So Disney is starting to really see the gaming world once again. And clearly enough, now they're doing 1.5 billion worth. I don't think it's gonna like signal that now we're just gonna get a bunch of cool triple A, you know, Marvel, Disney, Star Wars video games, I think a lot of it is going to come with like just more Disney properties in Fortnite uh, and mobile games and a bunch of other things because the business is bigger than the games that we like to play sometimes. So we're just going to have to wait and see how this $1.5 billion pans out. This does beg the obvious question though, right? This move where essentially it's the bigger businesses growing and getting bigger, uh, where there's still a lot of layoffs and studio closures and stuff, uh, and then there's gonna be the indies. So is it gonna be just like indies and massive stuff? Where's that in between? I don't know. I'm just spitballing as a guy on an armchair expert, really. So let me know what you think. Hey, jumping over here now, new year, new you. It's time to learn something new, right? But it can be hard to learn something new in this distracting, busy, modern world. I get it. It happens to me. Well, thankfully, with today's sponsor, Brilliant, you can learn by doing. Brilliant can help you learn math, data science, computer science uh, interactively. It's practical and fun with lessons for everyone from uh, novice, beginners uh, to some truly advanced level stuff. And new lessons are added every month. It's very easy to get started. It's very customizable. You know, Brilliant will ask you a couple of questions when you start to really customize and tailor to your needs. As I've mentioned before, I've dabbled a little bit in the programming lessons and Brilliant explains the fundamentals to me in easy to grasp concepts, guiding me through with tangible examples of coding, not just making me memorize pages and definitions of code lingo to pass some test. No, learning practically here makes a heck of a difference. And they keep it fun. You might get hooked on this. Even if you feel like you haven't learned anything in a while or you simply can't anymore, you should give Brilliant a try. Start your 30-day free trial by clicking the link in the description down below or going to brilliant.org slash game ranks. The first 200 people that click and head over there will get 20% off an annual plan. That's a huge deal, so go and check that out. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash game ranks. And big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring our videos. And in other news, uh, whether you want to hear this or not, uh, seems like there's going to be more The Last of Us. The Last of Us Part 3, I presume, uh, is teased to be a thing thanks to uh, The Last of Us Part 2 making of documentary that came out. Over the weekend, it is called Grounded 2, uh, and it details the whole long development cycle of The Last of Us Part 2. Uh, I watched it. I actually thought it was pretty good. I think these things are always very interesting. There's a little bit of marketing in there in the middle, but it's got some interesting stories. Uh, but at the end of it, uh, Neil Druckmann, lead there, uh, did state that they think they have a concept for a little bit more story to tell. They, they got one more in them, uh, and this isn't going to be what has talked about in the past, kind of like a smaller spin-off story featuring Tommy, uh, which would also be cool. No, this would be a whole full-fledged third part of a story. Give us a Joel prequel and he's a bad guy. Yeah, Murder Man Joel prequel. That'd be sick. Joel and Tommy just murdering around yeah, town. Dude. Yeah. I'm curious to see what that would entail uh, because I was one of the people with the first Last of Us that I was like, that's good. We don't need any more. Uh, And then after The Last of Us Part 2, I'm also like, that's good, we don't need any more. So I linked that uh, Last of Us documentary if you want to watch that. I also linked a trailer for uh, Halo, the Paramount Plus show, Season 2. It's rolling out, there are two episodes out now. I watched the first episode, and yeah, uh, the beginning of it was like the coolest Halo shit ever. And then it still just kind of seems like it's the same 
boring, weird show. But that's just me. I mean, judge it for yourself. I watched the whole first season. I don't really remember it. Maybe you're a glutton for punishment. I, I don't know. Uh, but also linked uh, is just like a little link, a reminder that uh, there is a Final Fantasy VII Rebirth demo out now. Uh, you don't have to wait too much longer for the game. It's like in a week or so. But if you want to jump into the demo, that is available for PlayStation. Also, like I mentioned last week, I, I, mentioned, I highlighted a couple of things, but now Steam Next Fest is in full swing. Uh, this is if you want to check out some new game experiences. If you're the type of person to say, Jake, all games are boring now, this is the perfect place to look to find what's new and upcoming. Smaller games, mid-tier games, uh, low-budget stuff, busted stuff, polished stuff, early access stuff. There's a lot of great stuff here. These are just a couple that caught my eye, like that I plan on diving into more, like so I can't really say if they're like good or not, but they look exciting at a glance. Uh, I downloaded a bunch. Uh, the first is Indica. This is like a horror experience that looks really unlike anything I've seen in a while. Looking forward to diving into that. Also, there is a demo available for Pacific Drive. Uh, that comes out soon, but if you want to check out the demo and really see what it actually is, I think you should because it's not quite what you expect. But I'm looking forward. We're going to do a before you buy uh, on that as well, so keep your eyes peeled. Also, this one I just thought was funny. It's Supermarket Simulator. Uh, this looks very early. This looks like a very, made by a very small team, but I downloaded it and I wanna check it out because sometimes the job simulator things are pretty fun, uh, but also I would like to revisit my pain as someone who worked at a grocery store as a manager for like 10 years. Just about to ask yeah, let's uh, let's let's go back into the shit, man. Also, Harold Halibut. Uh, this is kind of like a story narrative game, but with a really, really incredible visual style. Uh, I don't know if it will hold everybody's attention, but this does seem pretty sweet. And some of my friends had some good things to say about it. Also, hashtag Drive Rally. Uh, I just scrolled past this one and added it to my list because it looks like Auto Modelista, the classic PS2 uh, racing game that I loved. Uh, just I like racing games and I like cartoony racing games games for sure. And uh, last but certainly not least, Hellskate, the game that a lot of you guys have sent me because you're like, hey, Jake, this is your type of game. And I agree. It absolutely is. This is like a Tony Hawk game, uh, but with combat and roguelite elements. Uh, and I am about that. I checked this out a little bit. It does seem very early access and rough around the edges, but the concept is brilliant. Also, uh, Berserk Boy looks really cool. There's a demo up. It's basically a new Mega Man X, which hell yeah. Uh, and then also Ultros, which looks like a really cool, trippy Metroidvania. Really, really cool looking art style. There you go, Andy recommends. Also linked below, uh, it's not up yet, but I will link it when it's done. Uh, the Helldivers 2 Before You Buy, uh, we've been playing and it's really fun if you like multiplayer shooters. Uh, and I am picky with them, but I had a lot of fun playing this one. So when that goes up, I will link that in the description down below. Uh, but also some quick Ubisoft news. Uh, head of Ubisoft CEO, Yves Guimau, did go on record talking about Skull and Bones, which there is like a, a beta type thing you can access right now if you just want to check it out, see what the deal is. Uh, but the game is out uh, in like a couple of days. Uh, but he did talk about the size of Skull and Bones and how he calls it a quadruple A game which sounds ridiculous. And I really think that people are like really poking fun at that and making fun of that, yes. But I think what he's saying by quadruple A is just how much money and resources they spent on this thing. Think about how long they've been working on this game, like a decade. I'm really looking forward to seeing if it's, if it's worth it. This is essentially video games, Chinese democracy, like the Guns N' Roses album. <laughs> Also, uh, for people paying attention to Assassin's Creed Red, this is like the feudal Japan shinobi style Assassin's Creed game that was teased. Uh, seems like we might have a rough release window, possibly. According to VGC, Ubisoft has stated that Assassin's Creed Red will be released by the end of March 2025. This is within fiscal year 2025, so that puts it uh, smack in between April 2024 and March 2025. So it could, in theory, be a holiday or fall 2024 release. I don't know for sure, but we have that and then like Star Wars Outlaws. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, some Ubisoft games being out in the mix and hopefully being decent. You know, I mean, I really liked the Prince of Persia game, but we'll see if they're just back to the same old yearly stuff. All right, but that's the news. That's everything this week. Uh, we got a lot of Before You Buys to go back and work on. So let me know in the comments, uh, first of all, that pinned comment in, a, in the section down below, what you're playing this weekend. Definitely want to hear. It helps us like tailor videos to you guys, know what you're playing, stuff like that. But also, um, what do you think about the Xbox news? <laughs>
There's a lot to digest. Nothing official yet, but again, how are you feeling? What are you thinking? Are you gonna watch the Halo show? Uh, and then on the PlayStation side, are you jumping into the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth demo? What do you think about a possible third Last of Us? Where could the story go? Let's talk about anything video game news from this week down in the comments. We'll be down there as much as possible. We are down there, but if you wanna yell at me directly, you can always find me on my YouTube channel, Jake Baldino, uh, where I put up a video about uh, the story and spoilers behind Suicide Squad. Construction noise <laughs> still. We're almost done. I'm just going to keep going, man. Uh, yeah, link below if you want to find me on Twitter, Instagram, anything like that. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Jake Baldino. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Pizza's on me.